Hey everybody, this is Midnight Update. I'm Seamus Byrne. Welcome to Wednesday, 4th of March. Today I went and visited Motorola at the APCO Australia 2009 conference. They invited me along to come and check out their new walkie-talkie design. And the idea is that they've completely rethought the way a walkie-talkie needs to work for emergency services, whether you're a firefighter or a police officer. So it sounded kind of interesting, so I thought I'd go and take a look. I'm here at APCO Australia 2009. That's the Association of Public, no, of Professional Security, Public Safety Communications Officials. Now I'm here at Motorola's stand as they've got some really cool new tech to show off, showing how things have been redesigned uh, by actually going in, out into the field and thinking about how people actually need to use this stuff when they're fighting fires or they're uh, running around town in their police cars. You must make the radio very simple. It must be, as, as we're saying here, um, technology is second nature, so that you pick it up and the, the first thing that you touch is the button that you need to push to talk, which is what you need to do in, in a crisis. Very large buttons for people who have gloves on their hands, the knobs which are spaced wide apart again because of uh, uh, knobs uh, for firemen especially who wear those things. A display on the, the top so that if you're wearing this on your belt you can still see what's happening as, as well as on the, uh, the front. The changes which have been made to the audio characteristics of this radio, um, some really major changes in terms of the, the, the sound pressure levels that you can get out of the speaker but still without distortion so that can be heard very clearly in a very uh, loud environment where there's lots of ambient noise. Also the ability of the, the radio with the two microphones to discriminate between the human voice and the background noise in order to eliminate the background noise and only send the important information which is obviously vital for these sorts of people. Speaking of the audio enhancements, they had a quick demo to show how it works. So let's take a look. Chief 9 to fire alarm. I have a working fire in a six story building. Dispatch a second alarm assigned. Chief 9 to fire alarm. I have a working fire in a six story building. Dispatch a second alarm assigned. Chief 9 to fire alarm. I have a working fire in a six story building. Dispatch a second alarm assigned. I also had a chance to chat with Bruce Claxton. He's a senior director of design integration for Motorola. The guy's a bit of an industrial design guru. He's previously been president of the Industrial Designers Society of America. So I asked him how they actually gained the insights to significantly rethink these handsets. And the way we do that is that we will go out in the field and actually ride along with police, we'll walk the streets with them, we'll observe them, and so on. But we're doing that a little differently. We're doing that with psychologists, anthropologists, and designers together. And we actually have sheriff deputies in our lab uh, several times a month, and so on. And on the fire scene, by the way, we're even sending our designers out to attend fire training school. We're sending them through the whole rigor of knowing what it's like to be in the smoke and the fire and the noise and so on. And we learned a lot about that and came up with some questions about how people perform under moments of extreme stress. And we asked our psychologists, like, well, what happens to the performance of our customers in those extreme situations? And after some research, we came back with this thing called high velocity human factors. That's about understanding from a psychological point of view what it's like to be under extreme stress because everything starts breaking down. You don't hear, con you don't hear commands, uh, it's hard to see things, uh, it's hard to perform tasks. So we know we need to design for that and we are. And so we're gonna start making these products and they are much simpler to use, more obvious, and we end up with technology that's second nature. I didn't know until I got there, but Motorola also looks after a lot of the smart technology that now goes into the police force vehicles. So we got to take a look at the tech that now sits inside the New South Wales police force cars. The uh, smart car was a project to try and simplify the cars 
one of the um, prototype cars we looked at had uh, 12 devices mounted in the car. We we're busy trying to reduce that down to a more manageable level for the officers. So it was all about trying to integrate the various devices into the uh, car itself. We've um, managed to uh, reduce what's actually in the car basically down to the screen itself. Some uh, devices where uh, it's considered necessary for them to have a separate device, for example the radio. So the radio is a standalone device separate from the computer. But basically we've brought everything onto the computer itself. We uh, have uh, the ability to bring up uh, all the uh, incidents around us and also view other people's incidents at the same time. We can then go through those uh, incidents and review parts of it. For example, were there any vehicle information involved, its actual location. We also do um, messaging back to uh, the various other units and back to our CAD. We also do a chat room where we can actually exchange information with other officers in our group. The other motivation for it was to um, make it a more safer environment. Currently from the left hand side there there's an airbag that would be deployed in an accident. Um, in some of the vehicles we reviewed, that would, uh, the devices mounted over there would have become projectiles into the officer. So we've had to uh, reduce the locations of where we can actually mount devices to make the car safe. In the uh, equipment tray on the back here, we went for a, a tray arrangement in this vehicle to try and um, find that spare real estate. We basically have a computing device, a docking station for a laptop and a video recording device over here. Along the back row there we have our voice radios, power supply distribution and a wireless modem in the back there. That enables us to access remote cameras and things like that. Our major cost in these vehicles is actually D and RE. In other words, taking the equipment out of one car and putting in the next one. The idea of the tray is you've got all the equipment mounted, you can take this straight out of that one car and mount it straight in the next car. The serious problem in all the cars is the getting enough power to run all the equipment. We've gone to dual batteries to try and have the storage, but we have to then start managing the power we do have. Um, one of the uh, tricks has been going to lead lighting and the sort of those sort of technologies. And again, the uh, rationalisation of the equipment in the car, bring it back to one computer device. So having multiple devices reduces the current consumption in the car. One last very quick thing, had to show you this, cool stealth walkie talkies, take a look. These look somewhat like a, a cellular phone and that's no accident, it's basically designed that way for specifically uh, surveillance type people who still need a digital radio which is going to have all of the encryption and security but um, it's not as obvious that they're using a two way radio when they're wandering around in public. So they hold this thing up and uh, people who are in the same area think they're using a cellular phone and they're still communicating with each other. That's all for tonight's update. Thanks for stopping by. Join us weeknights around midnight Sydney time for Daily Geek News and for more coverage, visit midnightupdate.com.